welcome back to Keep Smiling Adventures and today we are on the bomb track because today we are going on a bike packing mission. Probably the longest bike packing mission you can do if you want to stay in Dorset. The Dorset Divide. 322 miles all around Dorset. Don't know why it's called Divide because it's actually a loop but that is going to be the mission for this video. 322 miles, we're going to do some wild camping, we're going to do some bike packing, we're going to hit the trails on the bomb track. It's been a while since we've been on this bike and we're keeping it a bit local considering we were in Scotland last week. Right, let's go and hit the Dorset Divide. I have done 30 miles. I forgot to mention this route officially starts in Weymouth but obviously being a loop you can jump on it anywhere and luckily for me this route comes pretty close to where I live a few miles away um, so I started in a place called Camford Heath um, near Paul and uh, yeah so we're heading we're starting from there and today we'll be going up the Jurassic Coast. We are in sort of Studland area and uh, on all this nice open area. And today the weather says it's all going to be stormy and rainy and I'm really kind of hoping it is because it's really hot and stuffy but um, nothing yet so I'm just going to carry on, crack along the Jurassic Coast and I think we're going to be finding somewhere to camp along there somewhere tonight and hopefully we'll get some storms. That will be awesome. Right, let's continue. Understorms and it's hot, hot rain. Woo! thunderstorm and some rain. It feels like forever since I've been on a trip and I've just been hammered with rain 
Um, there was a stage on this channel where it just seemed like every single trip, rain, rain, rain. And then it just, you know, it got nice again. And then that was like nice fun rain, thunder, lightning, rain, but it's hot, perfect riding conditions. Right, we've done 40 miles. Uh, we're just coming up to Corfe Castle and we're gonna climb up onto the Ridgeway. And uh, I think we're just gonna try and get past, a little bit past Lulworth and uh, all the firing range and then hopefully find somewhere to camp. Although, because it's been so dry for so long, all the ground was basically like rock solid dry. And that means when it rains, all the rain just sort of sits on top and doesn't sink in. So it might take a little while to dry. Oh well, let's go, uh, let's continue towards the divide. <laughs> Alright guys, so I have done about 60 miles today for the first day of the Dorset Divide. I am probably going to camp in this little field here. I'm um, just sort of waiting for it to get dark. It's got about an hour until sunset. Um, had some more rain, so I sort of let myself dry out again. It's just so refreshing the rain though. It's like warm and then you get this beautiful refreshing rain. Um, today we're going to have a Ginsu for dinner, but this camp spot comes um comes stocked with uh quite a few blackberries so i will be snacking on against us and lots of blackberries i'm currently around 35 miles away from weymouth so we'll make it to weymouth tomorrow and then a little bit further um and we'll see today um is the only day supposedly that we're gonna actually have rain the heat is going to be back tomorrow. Right, I'm going to wait around, set up camp, have a Ginsters, have some blackberries, and I'll see you bright and early, as always, in the morning. Good morning guys. Last night was so nice. The temperature was like just that perfect camping temperature. Not too hot, not too cold, just like absolutely perfect. Nice and quiet place as well. Nice flat, dry, just like great. Great, great night of sleep as well. Slept a good eight hours I would say, um, which is always good. And today, waking up to a bit of an overcast kind of a bit misty um morning but all pretty good and nice today we are starting around 35 miles away from weymouth and we're going to do a bit of a loop we're kind of near dorchester we're going to do a kind of like a loop around dorchester and then sort of towards weymouth way so um let's break camp because it's currently about half five in the morning. The, mo the sun isn't rising until around 6 a.m. now. So what does that mean? Does that mean winter's coming? Right, let's break camp and uh, let's get on with day two of the Dorset Divide. All right, yo, let's, let's go. Yeah. 
was on the run Right guys, I have just come through Weymouth, heading out towards Portland, well I'm sort of in Portland now, um, which is actually a correction, is where this route finishes and starts, so just a bit past Weymouth. I have just stopped for my brunch, lunch, I think it's about 11, so you know. Today I thought we'd throw it back to my old ultra distance lunches. A full roast chicken. Yeah, I used to, when I used to do a lot of ultra distance e type rides, when I'm riding like 250, 300 mile days, I used to stop and just demolish a whole chicken. Now, annoyingly, something I always, always forget on 9 out of 10 of my bikepacking trips is my spork. So, I'm gonna have to eat this like an absolute animal. Should be fun. Oh, now I am full. That was a bloody good lunch. A whole roast chicken and six Bakewell tarts for dessert. I think we're ready to just ride for days now. Right, so on this trip, I am not going to be smashing out big miles each day. I am gonna take it as easy as possible. Mainly because my heel, still not quite right, still a little bit sore from the Scotland trip. Um, but today we've done, we've done 32 miles so far and um, if we can do that again, that'd be pretty decent and hopefully we'll find a nice place to camp with a sea view tonight. That would be the ultimate goal. But let's make a move because from here, everything gets steep and hilly. So uh, let's go. <laughs> guys so i have just come up by hardy's monument it was windy up there so i've just like dived down into the uh, trees to uh, get a bit of shelter i've done about 60 miles so pretty happy with that for today i'm gonna start looking for somewhere to camp i am having a slight issue with big bab bomb track she's such a high maintenance girl lately First of all, she wants a bottom bracket, give her a bottom bracket. Then she wants a cassette, give her a cassette. Give her a chain at the same time, then some gear cables, then some brake pads. And now she needs uh, some jockey wheels because one of the jockey wheels, the little bearing in it is uh, well, it's just died and it's all like really wobbly side to side. So every now and again, um, the chain sort of drops and gets jammed in between the jockey wheels. It's, uh, it's a pain. But we're just gonna keep going and live with it for the next few days. 
Uh, it's just uh, just very uh, temperamental. <sighs> Big bab, bomb track, very high maintenance lately. Be better. So I've done 60 miles. I'm gonna start looking for somewhere to camp. It's about 5 p.m. So it's still a few, a bit early to camp, but I think if we're gonna go roughly where I think we're gonna go, I've camped somewhere before. And I'm kind of hoping we're going to go there because that would be a perfect place to camp tonight. Um, yeah, so far today has been nice. Coming around all like the Portland area has been was absolutely beautiful. I've only ever really done that on the road, like the road section. So coming around all the uh, coastal paths and stuff was uh, fun. A little bit rough. Um, definitely would be a bit rough on a gravel bike. Bomb track was pretty good on that. But after that, it was quite grindy. A lot of like road, big, big section of road slog which I kind of wish I was on the gravel bike. But so far, nice day. Right, let's carry on for a couple more hours and go and find somewhere to camp. Fingers crossed, I'm gonna get a really good spot. Let's go. Right guys, so we're finishing the day with 65 miles covered. I actually did go a slightly different way than what I thought and uh, it's actually a nice way. Um, just over there is the sea. You can't see it because um, for some reason we're in a little mini rainstorm again. Um, I am gonna camp on this field somewhere. I'm just chilling out under a tree. So it's also quite windy, um, but luckily these trees are sort of covering me from here, so I'm going to just camp in this little corner over here in a little bit once the rain stopped. And uh, yeah, should be a nice night. Got a sea view there, I've done 65 miles. I've got about 25 miles until we get to Lyme Regis tomorrow, and then we sort of start turning back and heading inland, and uh, the hills continue. Today has been quite nice, quite easy. Um, decent day. I'm gonna sit here and chill until this rain dies down a bit and then we're gonna set up camp. Well, good morning guys. This is day three of the Dorset Divide. Last night, although the weather forecast said it wasn't raining, I can assure you it was raining all night. It's still sort of raining, not heavy, just drizzle right now. It's just starting to stop, but it was definitely raining all night. Last night was, it was incredibly warm. I was really hot. I did sleep quite well, but it was very warm. And today, waking up, it felt like one of them days where I could just quite easily stay in that tent all day and all night again. But the cloud are starting to pass us by and we can make a start. A very lazy morning start. It's currently 6 a.m. We are right on the coast, and this is day three of the Dorset Divide. Let's do it.
Holy shit, that's scary. <laughs> oh my god, just come around this corner. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but there's just a cow's face right there. Oh my god. It's not gonna be good. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> that was uh that was quite impressive to be fair. Fair play, buddy. Fair play. That is an absolutely disgusting bride away. I hate that section. It's just fawns everywhere and uh, you just get all cut up. And to make things worse, my bag, my bar bag, just uh, just broke the strap. I'm hoping I've managed to strap these around the bars. Hopefully that will hold it in place. Right, new bar bag and new jockey wheels for this trip so far. Woo! Right, it's uh, finally stopped raining as well, so good times. We're gonna drop down now, I think into a place on screen now because i can't remember what it's called and uh time to get some breakfast, breakfast. <laughs> guys I've done about 25 miles for today so far today it feels very sluggish and very slow because well it is everything in Dorset everything in Devon to be honest and Cornwall is a uh, short steep and painful everything is like 20 plus percent gradient but we've done about 25 miles I'm currently at Cannington viaduct which is a nice place to have a little sugar up because I'm bonking a little bit and well so far today is just very slow but luckily the bike is still going I've had to unjam the chain a couple times my uh, bar roll bag is actually better now that I've actually strapped them straps over um, so that's good so the next 25 30 miles are all still going to be grueling i think for the next 50 miles it's all pretty lumpy and bumpy um, and uh, hopefully we'll get some flow because to be honest the coastline is just a lot of hard work i was definitely thankful for the bomb track gearing and time to crack on and try and get some miles into today let's go
Good morning guys, good morning. Today we are starting about 15 miles away from Sherbourne. In the end yesterday I did around 70 miles. Um, towards the end it was just like this continuously endless road slog and I, I'll be honest I was getting pretty bored. Now I like road but the problem is when you're riding in Dorset and Devon and Cornwall quite a bit it's uh there are some beautiful views like the one around me right now but there's also just a lot of hedges and it's very tedious very fast so we ended up doing 70 miles 15 miles away from Sherbourne now today I really need to get kind of a big day out of the way because we're gonna hit Gold's Hill, Hover's Hill. We're also going to get to the highest point on this trip just before we get to Blandford. And at Blandford is about 80 miles. That is the goal for today is to try and get to Blandford. There's some big hills along the way, but if we can do that, that sets us up for a perfect, easy finish tomorrow. I mean, it's 130 miles until the finish line. Possibly we could do that today, but I doubt it. But this is day, I think it's day four. Let's continue with the Dorset Divide. Let's go. Jesus. Oh my God. Please go away. That is one big cow. Whew. What a morning. We've done 25 miles. Just come through Sherbourne. We are now at a place called Mill Millbourne Port. And wow, what a way to start the morning. Fawns everywhere. I'm cut up like mad. Then I nearly lost my phone. And then, and a massive schlong. Could be worse, I guess. Right, it's time for some breakfast. Today, we're having some strawberries, some raspberries, some of uh, these uh, apple things, I don't know really what you call them, and some orange juice. And uh, today is actually going pretty fast. We've done 25 miles, it's currently about 9 a.m. and it's all a bit road again, with some tiny little bits of off-road. Drew has definitely felt very road since about Cannington Viaduct. Uh, our next stop is Shaf Shaftesbury and the Hovis Hill, Gold Hill. Uh, let's uh, eat some breakfast and crack on. Going good this morning, although my legs are stung too. This route is really starting to get really annoying. Every time we actually come off the road, which isn't very often, which just this, just greeted to this. They definitely cannot get past all that. Back on the road it is then. My legs. Ow.
Well, an absolutely solid start to today. It's about 1 p.m. and we've done about 55 miles. We are cracking through these miles, mainly because a lot of them have been road miles. Very easy and uh, nothing too hard, apart from the odd bramble bush. Now, you know the saying, don't beat around the bush. This route literally is the definition of the opposite of that. It beats around every bush just goes out of its way to just come back on itself. You think, oh, maybe I'll get some nice flowy single track. And most of the time, no, it's just road. But we've done 55 miles and we've got about 20 to go until we get to the highest point on this trip. And uh, so we're gonna have some lunch. Um, we're having a pucker pie. Uh, Kints is out of stock, seems to be everywhere at the moment. So we're having a pucker chicken bolty slice for lunch and then we're gonna crack on. And we're gonna get them next 20 miles done. And then we could potentially just have an early night or we'll just crack on and uh, who knows, we might be able to finish or we'll have a very early night. One of the two, either way, pucker pie time. Look at the view. Now, that is what I'm talking about. This route has suddenly actually got quite fun. Since Shaftesbury, it's actually been fun and flowy and actually off-road. A couple of little bits of overgrown, but it was totally worth scratching myself to get to do all that lush single track. And it was just like downhill and it just felt like it was forever. So I am happy. I'm also very near the top of the highest point and a, a very conveniently placed bench that's had the words, may the wind be forever behind your back or something like that. guys so i am finished for today i have done about 95 miles smashed it today absolutely smashed it got to where i wanted to go get to actually a bit further so happy happy days and one thing i want to say on this trip every single night i have had an amazing camp spot like i've not had to really search for it i've just when i've wanted a camp spot I've just found one, just like tonight. Found one right here in the corner of this field with a view like this. Absolutely perfect. And this is how I'm gonna finish this adventure, this video, because tomorrow I've got like 30 miles to go, if that, and it's, it's all very plain sailing and simple, but it should be and it's uh, just a bit boring. So if you've enjoyed 
the Dorset Divide bike packing trip guys give this video a thumbs up and if you are not subscribed consider subscribing 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year can we do it until next time guys keep smiling enjoy the adventure